Good morning, good afternoon or good evening wherever you might be. This video will talk about the basics of inserting and using pivot tables. In the file we have open here, it's a typical company type file with various headings across the top uh, with uh, the details of sales that have been made by the, uh, the various sales people. They're listed under headings and with uh, IDs, country, etc. There are some rules that we need to follow before we can use pivot tables correctly. First of all, we need to have headings across the top. Then we need to ensure wherever possible that there are no blank rows and that there are no blank columns in the data. In this case, you can be assured that there are no blank columns and there are certainly no blank rows because this particular information goes down 2156 rows and across to column K. So control home takes me right back to cell A1. The next step is that we must click somewhere in the data, anywhere, any cell in the data. Then we use the insert tab and we choose pivot table. This starts a wizard that uh, says this is the range and it will select all of the range other than the headings as we'll see here. So you will see the scrolling marquee and it goes right down to that 2156th row and across to column K and surrounds its requirement with the scrolling marquee. Some people call them marching ants. It's a good idea to always put your pivot table on a new worksheet because then you can switch between worksheets to see either the data or the pivot table. Now when we click OK, Excel opens up a pivot table here on the left and shows the fields on the right hand side. The creation of the pivot table is simply handled by dragging the items, the field names, which it is listed here, down into the uh, various categories down here. We're going to create a pivot table which will show me the country, the salesperson and the total cost of the various goods. So first of all, we'll drag the country down and put the country into the columns. There I see my pivot table has be begun to become created. Then we want the salesperson. We'll put the salesperson in the rows, so I'm purely dragging them down. And now we look at the price. In this case it's called extended price. And we need to drag any uh, field that involves numbers down into the values category. So we drag the extended price down into the values and by default Excel shows me the totals for the various countries for the different salespeople by adding the items. Now the beauty about a uh, pivot table is that if you're not happy with the setup the way it is viewed here and to make it more readily viewable I'll change the view on this page to a zoom of 125% and we see that the um, it is much more easily viewable from an upload point of view. Now if I think that the pivot table would look better with the salesperson over here in the columns then I can do that and maybe put the country down here in the rows so there we see the numbers are still the same, uh, but the layout is different. Well, I'm not too keen on that. I like the country where it was and the salesperson down in the rows. So you can have the pivot table viewed as you wish it to be viewed by simply dragging the fields around. Let's say that I wanted the uh, shipped date for the various products. What I would do would be to drag the shipped date down into the columns. Let's see how that looks. There we go. So the uh, dates are across here now. 
uh, together with the country. If I scroll across a bit, I'll see the next country that comes up, Argentina, etc. So the dragging of the fields is uh, quite simple. Now, just a clue here, don't include too many fields in your pivot table because it becomes too difficult to read the pivot table. So I'm going to drag the ship to date off and put it back where it came from. Or I could have clicked the uh, uh, checkbox here and unchecked the ship date. Either way, drag off or uncheck. Now, the other major advantage of the, of the pivot table, and just imagine going back into the raw data, if you wanted to see this type of information, you can just imagine how long it would have taken to go through all of that information looking for the result here. Incidentally, I'm going to rename this pivot table by right clicking and rename and we'll just call it pivot1 and enter because if you need a second pivot table in the same file, no problem at all. What a lot of people do is to include lots of fields in one pivot table and it becomes very difficult to read. So uh, you can create another pivot table by simply clicking insert uh, after clicking, whoops, sorry my apologies, after clicking in the data and then insert pivot table and that will insert a second pivot table uh, where you can drag other fields. So you might like to have the customer ID here in the rows uh, you might like to have the uh, uh, the product name in the columns. There they are all are up across there, and the uh, quantities down here in the values. Remember, the values is reserved for those fields with numbers, and there are all of the uh, all of the numbers. And there's my second pivot table there. So I'll rename that one by right clicking and renaming. We'll call it Pivot Two. Of course, you could name it uh, more meaningfully if you wished. Back on Pivot 1, a major advantage of pivot tables is the ability to filter information. So what I want to see is the information for Laura Callahan. So I unselect all and click on Laura Callahan, And I want to see her sales for... Canada. So the, the column labels, I simply click there, unselect all, and we'll say Canada. And there is purely her information, her sales for Canada, totaled. Now again, just imagine how long that would have taken uh, if you had to use the original invoicing worksheet. So back to Pivot 1 to remove the filter. We simply click on the uh, uh, filter button and click select all, OK, again select all or clear filter from salesperson either way and that puts us back where we are. So that's, that's a very quick practical example of how to create a pivot table uh, and uh, remembering that we can create more than one pivot table in the file should we wish. Uh, to make uh, life much, much easier to analyse data. And in finality, the reason that we use pivot tables is to analyse data. The next upload will take this file a step further uh, and we'll see how we can right click on different fields and use the options available to us, formatting of the cells, the number format, uh, why we need to refresh data, uh, sorting, etc. So that will be in the next upload. But make sure you master the creation of, of pivot tables first up. And one very last thing, if you click outside of the pivot table, the pivot table field list disappears. To see that again, you simply click anywhere in the pivot table itself. So again, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so. Um, Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.